What's up YouTube? How's it going? My name is Luis Mendoza and welcome to my channel. So this is gonna be my first video. Uh, it's a little bit weird talking to a camera. It's the first time I've ever done it. Uh, so bear with me while I get used to it. Um, in today's video, I want to talk about uh, a new camera I just got, the Olympus 35 SP, and it's right over here. So, I have a package here. I'm going to do a little unboxing. Um, it's not going to be a really interesting unboxing because it is a used camera, so let's see what we have here. There we go. Whoops. Bunch of paper and and there's just a lot more paper in here. Just gonna move that away this as well. Nice. Uh the packaging wasn't that good. I've seen better packaging in other cameras I've ordered uh, through eBay, so I forgot to mention. I got this through eBay. It was around $130, I think, $140 maybe. And as you can see, it's right here, the Olympus 35 SP. Um, I got this from a seller in Japan named DPro2005. Got it shipped to Mexico. It took a long time to get here. So if you guys are shipping things from Japan, uh, you might want to consider that and it might not be your case but Mexico's uh, postal system is a crap so it just it took about two months to get here which is a really really long time I thought this camera was gonna be a little bit lighter but I was ex expecting this kind of size it's a little bit heavier than I thought but I, I think that's good that means it's, it's a solid camera I think Okay, there we go. Okay, so the reason why I got this camera particularly is I wanted a small rangefinder. It didn't have to be a rangefinder, but rangefinders do tend to be smaller. So I was looking for a small camera which was not expensive and that I could use as my like daily walk around camera. I wanted a few things. First, I wanted a small camera, which wasn't bulky that I, I know I'm not going to be able to fit this in my pocket, but I can easily carry it, put it in my backpack, just have it with me all the time. And I wanted a camera that I could carry around all the time. So that, that was the first, uh, first feature of the camera. Then the second thing I was looking for it was a camera that didn't need batteries, that I could operate manually uh, without batteries. And as you can see, this one, um, yeah, there it is, this one can. Um, so it's a, I, I still need to get used to it, but yeah, there it is. Okay, so all the controls are here on the dials. Uh, so that was the second reason. I want I wanted a camera that could operate without batteries that I could get, just use and shoot all the time and know that it would always work and I wouldn't have to be looking out for these batteries. Uh, uh, before this, I'm, I'm usually carrying a Canon A1, which needs a six volt battery to operate, and it's just a pain. Sometimes you don't have a, a place where they sell that kind of batteries. It's a, it's a pretty rare battery. I mean, you can find it like at Radio Shack and in computer stores and things like that, but uh, just like in a convenience store, you, you're probably not gonna find it. Um, so I wanted something that when I travel or when I'm walking around with my camera that I know it'll always work. So that was the other reason. Um, and then the third reason why I got this camera was I was looking for a camera that was pretty inexpensive. So uh, something in the 100 to $200 uh, range. And this one was pretty good. It was, uh, as I said, around $140 or $150 it was exactly. $150. So 
Um, this feed fitted like everything I was looking for. Um, I was looking through a lot of options in, in the internet and YouTube and reviews and uh, blogs as to what uh, good small range finders I could use uh, just as a walk around camera. And there, there's some people who even go as far as saying that this camera can be better than a Leica, uh, which uh, depends on what you, <laughs> I don't definitely don't think that's true, but it's just a really inexpensive way of getting into range finders, I think. Uh, and it's a really beautiful camera. Those were the, the, the main reasons why I got this camera. Um, now let me show you a little bit, tell you a little bit about the history of this camera. So these Olympus 35 SP, I'm not completely sure. So this is this one, there's a, a lot of versions of the Olympus 35 rangefinder line and they're all a little bit different. Uh, these one particularly was made from 1969 to 1972 and, and this one is just the Olympus 35 SP. Uh, there were a few versions of uh, Olympus rangefinders before this ones. I think this is this was one of the the first like really good ones and then after this uh, they made another version which is the SPN which is a newer SP and then they may, made a few other ones which include the Olympus 35 RD and RC which were a few of the last ones made in that line. Um, I, I didn't know anything about this camera before uh, getting into it. Uh, another thing as I said it, it's a bit heavy I, I thought it was going to be lighter but I just want to have a small comparison against another rangefinder and I have over here my uh, Texas Leica. This is one of my favorite cameras. It's a, a Fuji GW16902. So, and it's a medium format range finder. It has a pretty nice range finder patch. It's not amazing, but it's, it works. It has a fixed lens. Just for comparison's sake, uh, these two cameras are like this is a monster compared to that one as you can see and you're obviously not going to be walking around this with this thing everywhere you go although I do travel this is like the medium format camera I use to travel around because even if it's a big camera it's still small uh, and not as heavy for a medium format camera the only thing I don't like about it is that the fixed lens is a little bit big so it's it takes a lot of space in your bag but it's not that heavy so yeah good medium format camera travel around. I'll be doing another video on this camera at some time in the future. Let's put it over there. And now let's compare it to uh, the camera I usually walk around with, which is the Canon A1. And um, size-wise, I think they're pretty similar in height. Canon A1 is obviously a little bit taller they're pretty similar both like on the, the body's uh, uh, width but what really makes a difference is the lens. This one has right now a 35 2.8 lens and it, this is not a big lens, this is a small lens it's, and that's why I usually carry this one around uh, but even with a small lens the A1 is way bigger than this one and it just feels a lot bulkier. I think this is something a lot smaller, a lot uh, a lot more, I don't know, easier to, to carry around with. So uh, let's talk about technical uh, aspects of this camera. And uh, another one of the reasons I, I actually got this one particularly is they say uh, the 35, out of all the Olympus 35 uh, rangefinders, uh, the 35 SP is supposed to have one of the best lenses there are. So, and this is a 42 millimeter 1.7 lens. So you're gonna have a really wide aperture and it's a good focal length. They said uh, Olympus went with 42 millimeters because it was just halfway between a 35 and a 50. So uh, I've never shot with a 42, but it looks like it has a pretty nice um, field of view and uh, this lens is a, let me look over here, so 
we have right here. So the lens is a seven elements and five groups, which is supposed to be just as good as a Leica Summerlux 50 f1.4, which I've never shot, but it's good glass, I guess. And it has a 49 millimeter thread. Uh, the minimum focusing distance is 0.85 meters, which is about 2.8 feet. So it's not a, as bad. Usually range finders are around one meter. So you'll get a little bit closer distance, I think. And the aperture goes from 1.7 all the way to F16. Uh, it doesn't go up to F22, which is what you would usually expect, expect some of your, your lenses to go up to. But I never shoot at F22. I, the, top, the, the most I go is F16, maybe. And the shutter speeds go from 1 to 500, 1 500 of a second. And it also has a, an automatic mode, which I'm probably never gonna use because this camera uses uh, some Mercury batteries, which are the EPX625 batteries. And I have no clue where I can get them. I'm not even gonna try to get them because the reason why I got this camera in particular is it shoots without batteries. You never need batteries. So. And the only downside with that is you won't get to use, uh, I won't get to use, use the light meter. And the light meter is supposed to be really good. This has a spot metering button and it's supposed to be, um, I think it, it was actually one of the first cameras in the world to have a spot metering. So when you press the spot metering button, you'll be getting a reading just in the center of the frame. Uh, and if you depress it, then you'll get a read a reading of, of the whole frame. And uh, it also has like an aperture priority mode and all these uh, nice uh, automatic features, which in the early 1970s were, I guess, not very common. Uh, so yeah, I think I like it. Um, regarding the rangefinder patch, I think it's pretty bright. I'm indoors and I don't have the best lighting here. I can still see everything very clearly. So I'm really excited to get a few rolls, uh, as a lot of rolls uh, through this camera. And uh, one of the reasons I wanted a new camera is that I want to start a new project, which is going to start this week and I'll be working on it and posting the first video of that project very soon. I guess that's it guys. Uh, in a few months when I've used this camera a lot, I'm gonna make a more uh, in-depth review of the camera. This was just an unboxing and my first impressions of the Olympus 35 SP. And whenever I make that video, you guys uh, will be able to see it and uh, stay tuned. Uh, Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, this first look at the Olympus 35 SP. And in the future, I'll be making more videos about film photography, uh, darkroom techniques, uh, developing techniques, and sharing it with you guys. So if you like what you see, uh, then subscribe and like this video. And I'll see you soon. Bye.